All right, joining me now is a Bellator MMA featherweight fighter who takes on AJ McKee at Bellator 160 next month. Please welcome Henry Corrales to the show for the very first time. Henry, how's it going? Good, man. How are you guys? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Thank you for taking the time. So the first thing I want to talk about, um, you are currently winless under the Bellator MMA banner, but you, you fought nothing short of the best of the best Bellator has to offer. Uh, current champion Daniel Strauss, former champ Patricio Pitbull, uh, Emmanuel Sanchez. Is this you, all like 100% of the time, asking to fight the best elite competition, or has the matchmakers kind of chose to feed you to some of the best fighters Bellator has to offer? Uh, it's, it's been all on me, dude. Um, uh, from the moment I started fighting, you know, I just always want to fight the toughest people possible. And when I signed with Bellator, you know, I, was, I made that a point, you know what I mean? I want to, I just want to fight whoever you have to offer. And uh, they, they've offered some tough guys, and I've asked for some tough guys. So I don't know, man. It's been, it's, it's been a fun ride. Yes, definitely. Do you think uh, with the three losses under the Bellator banner, do you think you're in a must-win situation this time out against AJ McKee, or do you think Bellator will continue giving you a bit more leeway than other fighters just because you're fighting literally former champions, current champions, etc.? No, nah, man, this is a must-win. You know what I mean? Uh, in my, uh, it doesn't matter what Bellator thinks, dude. It's for me. It's just like I gotta fucking kill this guy. So. That's just my whole intention is this whole training camp for this fight. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Going in, if you do uh, do lose again, and I know um, we, we don't want to focus on, on possibly losing, but it's MMA. Anything can happen. You do believe, would you get cut uh, with a loss? Yeah, I don't know, man. I haven't given that much thought, to be, to be honest with you. You know, I haven't thought about that at all. It's just, uh, that's just not the way uh, my brain operates, dude. Exactly. Fair enough. Um, what is the biggest thing or, or a few big things you've taken away from your past three fights? Um, just the experience factor. Uh, when you're, you know, you're, you're fighting such high quality opponents, you need, you need, uh, you need time to prepare. And, uh, and yeah, I just you know, I just took a lot away from those fights. You know, um, I feel like I'm every 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 single one of those fights, I've walked away so much better. You know what I mean for the next for the next fight camp. And you know, I'm really it's weird. You know, I would I would have never thought like I'd be I'd be happy with my career coming off three losses. If you'd have told me that like a couple years ago, I'd have been like, get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't know, man. I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited getting in there and mixing it up with all these fucking high quality fighters, so but that's all cool. And, you know, now it's time to you know, I gotta put these guys away. I gotta get back to my get back to my my style. For sure. Now although despite the three losses, you have looked good in all three of the fights. You were you were looking decent against Patricio Pitbull. You went to a split decision against Emmanuel Sanchez. Does that kind of give you a bit of confidence and say, hey, I'm hanging with the best of the best? Oh, well, dude, I hate to make excuses, but, uh, you know, I took the, the Strauss fight on my debut. I took that one on, like, four weeks' notice. I had to cut, like, 40 pounds. So I've, I've already, like, I'm handicapping myself, you know what I mean? Like, I put myself in some like, bad positions. And then uh, the Emmanuel Sanchez fight, a lot of people don't know, dude, that guy, that guy uh, fractured my gum line, top, my top and bottom gum line. I had to have surgery. I was out of the game for eight months. And it happened in the first round. So I, I, still, I still managed to fight through that and, you know, come to a split decision with that guy. You know what I mean? And then uh, the Patricio fight, that man is just a fucking stud, dude. And, uh, you know, 10, 12 days notice, whatever, I took that on. Uh, uh, he... he, he just a high level black belt like that just snatched snatched any possibility of victory away from me at that moment. Yeah, you mentioned taking that fight on short notice. In fact, you, you've taken a lot of fights on short notice. So I don't imagine taking this fight on a month's notice will be really a problem whatsoever. Well, check this out, dude. About three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I, I knew about this. I knew I knew there was an event coming to Anaheim, and I'm like, dude, this is my backyard. 
Bellator, you know, Bellator has given me all the fights I wanted, and I was like, I'm going to be on that card. So I just fuck, I just started a fight camp right then and there. Really? So I got a full camp in preparation for this fight. That's so, awesome. Dude, I'm stoked, dude. I can't how, wait to how much, how much better do you think you will be with the two-month camp? Just, just you know, just be prepared, you know? You know, and just not so much, you know, just I won't go in there with just so much like, yeah, I got, I got some balls, what up, let's scrap, you know? It's just more of a time, you know, of preparation and, you know, refining your skills and this and that. Because if you train... This is a whole different ballgame of just like training for a fight and then just, you know, just training and, you know, hanging out and enjoying yourself or whatever. But so it's, it's just a whole different mindset. And when you when you found out Bellator was going to Anaheim, did you instantly start contacting Bellator officials, Scott Coker, the matchmakers, or did you or, or did you let them come to you? Uh, yeah, uh, I, my agent, my agent made it happen, Jason House and uh. He was like, dude, it, it makes a lot of sense for Bellator to get you on that card. It's your backyard. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna draw a crowd, so and I knew that too, so I was like, Fuck yeah, let's do it, dude. But make make that happen and I was like, either way I'm gonna prepare for it. Now you said a second ago how you how, how you knew about this fight uh quite a while ago and it'll be essentially a two month camp, but you didn't know about some of these other fights you've taken on short notice. Um taking one fight on short notice is one thing, but taking uh, multiple fights back to back on short notice is another. How do you always stay ready? How do you always how how are you always in shape? Well, I love the sport and I love all my training partners and all- you know, my buddies and all my coaches, and I just have a good time. And that's why I'm able to say, you know, somewhat in, uh, somewhat in good shape. And, uh, the, uh, you know, my losses didn't come from uh, being out of shape. You know, it's just uh, I got caught slipping here and there. So, um, yeah. Have you changed up your training uh, because of these recent losses? You know what? Yeah, I'm out here. At, I'm out here at the. I'm from Orange. I'm from uh, Southern California, the LA County, Orange County area, and I'm out here with uh, Benson Henderson at the lab. He's uh, he's the main event. He's fighting my last opponent, the Pitbull, and then uh, my other buddy, my other buddy Jake Roberts. He's also fighting on the card. So we're out here getting ready, and there's just a lot of all under one roof, dude. Just a bunch of high quality training partners. And my head coach is actually, uh, he's moved down here. My head coach, my striking coach, Eddie Cha, he's down here permanently. So I came out here, I'm, I'm out here during the week, and then I'm out, I'm back in uh, Orange County on the weekend with uh, Juliana Prado at Total MMA for my uh, jiu-jitsu and stuff. But that's, that's, been, that's been a huge difference for me, and uh, it's going to pay off for this fight. I was, I was down here. I was down here training uh, two weeks before the pitbull fight, so I, I liked it so much. I was like, "Cool!" I was like, "I want to come back here for my next camp." No doubt, it must be a big advantage having guys like Benson Henderson training with them and then having them on the same card as you. Dude, Benson, he's just a stand-up guy. Like, not only is he such a high-quality fighter and just a great athlete, dude's just an awesome person. And all these guys are at the lab, you know what I mean? And pretty much, and, and back home, like, you know, it's such a humbling, great sport. Like, I, I've been lucky now. All my training partners are super cool dudes, just motivating and just, it's just awesome, man. No doubt. Now, let's talk about this matchup. You're fighting AJ McKee at Bellator 160. How do you think you match up against him? I match up great against any 145er, I think. And, uh... It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good style matchup, you know what I mean? I'm a you know, I'm a gritty, I'm a banger and uh he's like an athletic southpaw, you know, a lot of movement, wrestler, so it's it's interesting. It's a very interesting matchup and I'm you know, I can't wait to get in there and put it on him. Now, with the win, you'll definitely solidify your position under the Bellator roster and whatnot. Where do you think you'll be specifically, though, in the featherweight division? Uh, again, I'm not sure about that, but uh, 
you know, as soon as I take care of business August 26th, uh, I'm going to get a rematch with uh, Emmanuel Sanchez. Why do you want that fight specifically? Because he, he fought a handicapped version of myself, you know what I mean? And he still couldn't put me away, and he still didn't even get close to it, and he still didn't want to uh, exchange with me. And, uh, you know, I heard he's kind of he's kind of running his mouth on social media, and it's just like, it's, just, it's a fight that I that I want. He's a cool, he's a super cool dude, and we ran into each other a couple times since the fight. And, uh, but it's just like, you know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't fight, he didn't fight the best version of myself, dude. And so, I was literally, dude, I'm missing, I'm missing five teeth. I got five teeth, he knocked out five of my teeth in the first round. And so, like, and it's still, like, I still, I, I thought I, personally, I thought I won that fight. I landed the bigger, heavier punches. He didn't want to engage with me. He wanted to just kind of like hold and fall and take me down. He turned into some type of wrestler all of a sudden when he's like a striker. You know what I mean? So it's like that's that's a that's a fight after this fight that I'm gonna that I'm gonna really fucking campaign for. And not only that, like it's a super exciting fight. You know, a lot of people were entertained by that fight, and you know, a big part of my game is like I want to fight for the people, dude. You know what I mean? Were you surprised that he recently lost to Daniel Weichel, actually this past weekend? Uh, yeah, I didn't see the fight, but fuck, dude, Daniel Weichel's tough. Like that guy, that guy, that guy's been in the game for a minute. He has a lot of fights, so no, I actually wasn't surprised. And I wouldn't have, and I would, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he would have won. You know what I mean? It's just whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned uh, training out out at the lab, of course, with Benson and, and a bunch of other guys. Are you specifically helping Benson because you have already fought uh, Patricio Pitbull, which is uh, Henderson's next opponent? Um, yeah, I know. You know what I mean? You know, I have a couple. He he's my buddy. He's my training partner. So I have I do, you know, I do have you know a couple you know words of advice for him. But at the end of the day. Benson's the man, dude. That guy has so much experience. He knows what he's doing. And at the end of the day, you know, just from the outside looking in, not even um, this isn't even a biased opinion on my end. But dude, he's a lot bigger than Pitbull. He's a better wrestler. He has better striking. He's just kind of he's just better than him. So it's like it's a tough fight for Pitbull, dude. Really, really tough fight for him. Fair enough. Uh, both you and your opponent, AJ McKee, are fighting out of California. This fight is in Anaheim. Who do you think gets the biggest pop from the crowd? Me. Definitely. Why do you think that? You know, I'm just... I'm, I knew you were going to say that, but give me an explanation. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit older than him. You know, I've been around. And, uh, you know, I'm a very social person in the scene, in, those, in that area, dude. I, I, I run around all those cities. I work in Costa Mesa. You know, I bartend at Commissary Lounge. You know what I mean? I, I growing up, I got kicked out of so many schools. Like I, I went to like t like fifteen different schools, so I have homies like everywhere. I got from all different school districts, so I, I, I can't imagine him having a bigger draw than me. What was that like growing up? And uh, like, talk about your childhood a little bit, going to school and whatnot. You know what, dude. Um, until now, you know, now I'm like a law-abiding citizen, but, you know, back then I was fucking crazy, and uh, I didn't know no better, and um, I just, you know, I thought it was normal, and so uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's just my, my whole life is just completely different now. When did you realize that you, you probably should get, uh, I don't know, change a little bit and, and, and stop doing those things that you were doing? Just slow, you know, just slowly but surely, just kind of like getting over, getting in trouble, and uh, kind of just not, you know, not not chasing my, you know, not chasing my dreams, and kind of just like chasing the fun and you know, women and partying, and so I kind of like I kind of shook all that, and then just I started training. You know, I didn't start training until I was like twenty two, twenty three, or something like that, and ever since then, you know, I just completely changed my life. Haven't been arrested since. <laughs> MMA must have been like a big turning point in your life, dude. Yeah, you know, you hear you hear people you hear people say it all the time, and like when I first started training, like it sounded kind of cheesy, you know, like oh, MMA changed my life, this and that. But like for me, it literally did. Like, dude, before, like I used to go to jail like all the time. I used to get arrested, like fuck. You know what I mean? Just like getting in like crazy brawls or like you know just 
just stupid shit. And then, uh, fuck, you know, now it's been like six years later, seven years later, and I'm just like, oh, wow, yeah, this, I guess this really did change my life. You know, I live a completely healthy lifestyle. I don't even drink. Um, you know, I'm just, I take care of my body, and it really did change my life. And I, it's been, it's come in connection with a lot of cool, you know, a lot of cool people and stuff that, you know, I don't think I would have been able to meet before, before all this. So, yeah, it really did change my life. That's awesome. Now, Henry, last question. How do you defeat AJ McKee next month? He's catching hands. I'm going to go in there, and, he's, and I'm just going to throw everything at him. And I don't, I don't, I don't see a going decision. Awesome, Henry. Appreciate you taking the time. Before I let you go, just let my audience know where they can find you on social media, and if there's anyone you'd like to thank you, give a shout out to. Now's your time. Just thank you to everyone who supports me, and uh, you know all my training partners at the lab, and then back home at uh, Total MMA Studios. All my coaches, and uh, you can find me at uh, Henry Corrales MMA on Instagram. And yeah, stay tuned. And thank you, for, thank you everyone for everything.